गुड इवनिंग चिल्ड्रन मै ऑडिबल गुड इवनिंग चिल्ड्रन गुड इवनिंग मैम गुड इवनिंग चिल्ड्रन ऑल राइट सो टॉकिंग अबाउट दस्ट क्वेश्चन वी टू कप टूवर्ड्स एंड ऑफ लास्ट क्लास I don't have the, where is the question picking ah this one this one so i don't think we saw the answer to this one so let's discuss the answer and then proceed with heron's formula somebody's mic is enable disable your mic yeah okay so the first one was uh, to write 0.127 recurring in the p by q form okay so 0.127 recurring in the p by q form in the p by q form so there are a few uh you know uh, ways in which we can answer this question uh there is not only one method there is more than one method to answer this question but i am going to recall the one which we used in the classroom so what i told you was uh now here the recurring part has two digits the recurring part has two digits which means we need to find 100x Two digits, no. So use two zeros. So hundred x. That's all. X you're going to have. You're going to say let x is equal to zero point one two seven two seven two seven. This is going to be a default equation. Let x be equal to zero point one two seven two seven two seven. Recurring. That is default. Apart from this, you need to have just one more equation. And what is that? since in 1 0.127 recurring two digits two digits repeat endlessly so two digits meaning find 100x two zeros so 100x so what is 100x 100x is equal to so the decimal point will shift like this 12 will be 12.7 Two seven two seven going on two seven going on like that. Hundred x no. So when you multiply by hundred, the decimal point will shift to the right. One two. So twelve point seven two seven two seven two seven goes on and endlessly. So this is what is hundred x. Now we need to subtract the two equations. You can call this one. You can call this two. Then you must write equation two minus equation one. What is that? Equation two is hundred x equals and equation one is <clears throat> you can write two seven how many ever times you want, how many ever times you want because it's going on endlessly. Now we need to subtract these two. 100x minus x, 99x is equal to. Now in the recurring part, you can see that 272727. This part gets cancelled because you will get 0000000. Now here 7 minus 1 6. You don't have to show the zeros here. You just slash out the repeating part like this. 7 minus 1 6. 12 minus 0 is 12. So we have 99x is equal to. 12.6, which is nothing but 126 by 10. 12.6 is nothing but 126 by 10. Why? Because 12.6. <clears throat> If you want to shift the decimal point, you need to do this, and that's how it becomes 126 by 10. Now the 99 comes for division. So x is equal to 126 divided by 10 into 99. Now let's simplify. <clears throat> Three fours are three twos are three thirty-three times. Um, two or three itself three. Uh, 
14 times, three elevens are. <clears throat> and again, uh, two fives are 10, two sevens are 14. So it is seven by 55, seven by 55. X is equal to seven by 55. So if you find the value of seven by 55 using a calculator, the calculator will show you 0 0.127, Use the calculator to find seven by 55. And that will show you the digits 0 0.127, endlessly. If you have not done this, if you have not worked this correctly, uh, please take a screenshot. This is how that's all it is. You don't have to find 10 X, 100 X, 1000 X, nothing. Just you will have one equation in X. You should just find one more. That's all. Just one more. And how do you find which one to uh, calculate? 10x or 100x or 1000x, which one to calculate depending on the number of digits in the repeating block. The repeating block has two digits. So 100x, that's all. If the repeating block has, see, after the decimal point, you have 127. Don't count one. One does not repeat. 0 0.1 is only once. 2727 two, seven is repeating. So in the repeating block, we have two digits. So 100, if it was 0 0.1275 uh, like this recurring, then it will be 1000 X. <clears throat> the other one is to, uh, the second question was to write 0 0.127 in the P by Q form. This one is simple. It's just 127 by 1000. It's just 127 by 1000. Very important question, very simple to answer. Please uh, register this. Uh, register the procedure. Well in your mind. OK, now continuing with the uh, Heron's formula. I remember we finished all this. Um, this one I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we finished this one. This one, I'm not sure, children. This is over. See the question. Oh, very good, very good. Okay. All right, children. Very good. So this is the next one. Uh, so Sanya or Sanya, however you call her, has a piece of land which is in the shape of a rhombus. She wants her one daughter and one son to work on the land and produce different crops to suffice the needs of their family. She divided the land into two equal parts. So she has a piece of land in the shape of a rhombus, in the shape of a rhombus. She has a piece of land in the shape of a rhombus. OK, so she divided the land into two equal parts. If the perimeter of the land is 400 meters, so perimeter of the rhombus, perimeter of the rhombus is equal to 400 meters. And uh, one of the diagonals is 160 meters. One of the diagonals, any one you can connect. This one or this, any one, you can connect this one or you can connect this one, any one you connect. One of the diagonals. Okay, so supposing we connect this one. One of the diagonals is 160 meters. 160, this diagonal is 160 meters. How much area will, how much area each of them will get? Now we know that in a rhombus, all the sides are equal. So if the perimeter is 400, then each side will be 100. In a perimeter, all the four sides are equal. Sorry, in a rhombus, in a rhombus, all the four sides are equal. And if the perimeter is 400 meters, each side of the rhombus will be 400 divided by 4, 100 meters. 
Now we know the length of one of the diagonals, 160 meters. You can connect anything, children. You can also join this diagonal. I don't know which one I've joined. Okay, it's like this. Okay, so you can, okay. So then the figure is like this, rhombus. Anything is fine. There's also a rhombus like this. All right, so <clears throat> 100 everywhere, 100, 100, 100, 100, and one diagonal is 160. Now you have to find how much area each of them will get. So look at the size of this, uh, this triangle. Look at the size of this triangle. 100, 100, 160. Look at the size of this triangle. Also 100, 100, 160. So these two triangles have the same, uh, you know, area because their sides are the same. 100, 100, 160. 100, 100, 160. They have the same sides, so their areas will be equal. So find the area of this triangle. The same will be the area of this triangle. So you can see here. First, using the perimeter, find the side of the uh, rhombus. Find each side of the rhombus. Then find the area of the triangle BCD. See here, BCD using Heron's formula. So you can see it here. So the same will be the area of the triangle ABD also. ABD also will be 4,800 meters square. So each of the two children will get an area of 4,800 meters square to, uh, you know, uh, produce. Each one will get 4,800 because the area of the area of this triangle is 4,800. So the same will be the area of this triangle, 4,800. So each of the children, the boy and the girl, will get 4,800 meter square of land to grow crops. Understood, children? Yes, yes ma'am. Yeah, take a picture. So today I'll be explaining a couple because it's online. I'm just going to explain a couple of sums and uh, mostly by 8.30 I'll finish the class after which you can complete the uh, sums which we have discussed in the class. So take a picture. Look, mom. Yeah. Okay, so here. A rhombus shaped field has green grass for 18 cows to graze. <clears throat> 18 cows can graze in this rhombus shaped field. If each side of the rhombus is 30 meters, so it's marked here 30 meters, and the longer diagonal is 48 meters. How much area of the field will, will each cow be grazing? So for this, we have to find the area of the rhombus. You need to find the area of the rhombus. So for that, find the area of this triangle. The same will be the area of this triangle also. Add both. Supposing this is 100. This also will be 100. So the total area will be 200 meters squared. Let me take a different number. Let me take a... Supposing the area of this triangle is 90 meters squared. The area of this triangle also will be 90 meters square because they have the same sides 30, 30, 48, 30, 30, 48. So if the area of this triangle is 90 meters square, the area of this triangle also will be 90 meters square. <clears throat> so then what's the total uh, area of the meaning? What's the area of the rhombus? The area of the rhombus will be 90 plus 90, 180 meters square. So then what will be the area of uh, grass for each cow? 18 cows have an area of 180 meters square. So for one cow, it will be 180 by 18, 10 meters square. Each cow, one cow will uh, can graze an area of 10 meters square. Because the total area of the rhombus is 180 meters square. 90 plus 90, 180 meters square. That's the total area of the rhombus. And if 18 cows have to graze, how much will each cow get? 180 by 18, 10 meters square. Yeah, take a picture.
take a picture children done done ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yeah So here again, we have to find the area for rhombus whose perimeter is 80 meters. So if the perimeter is 80 meters, each side. The perimeter is 80 meters, so each side will be 80 by 4, 20 meters. Each side will be 20 meters. And one of the diagonals is 24. Anything you can connect, you can connect this one or the other one, 24. You should find the area of the rhombus. The perimeter is 80 meters. So with the perimeter, you can find the side of the rhombus, 20 meters. One of the diagonals is 24. Now to find the area of the rhombus, you should find the area of this triangle, this triangle, and add both. So you can see here, uh, perimeter is given. So 4 into side is equal to 80. So side is equal to 80 by 4, 20 meters. 4 into side, 4A, 4A, because all the sides are equal. It's a perimeter 80 meters. So each side is equal to 20 meters. So each side, each side is 20 meters. Each side is 20 meters. And one of the diagonals is given to you, 24. Diagonal is given to you, 24. So as usual, find the area of this triangle, Haran's formula. The same will be the area of this triangle because the sides are the same. <clears throat> you don't have to find the area of this triangle again. Same area. And both you'll get the area of the rhombus. Take a picture, children. A floral design. So a floral design means not design on the floor. It doesn't mean that. It's not called a floral design because it's on the floor. See, it's written a floral design on a floor. Because it's on the floor, it's not a floral design. Floral meaning flower-like design. Floral meaning flower-like. Flower-like design. That is a floral design. Okay. Floral, floral design meaning a flower like a design. A floral design is made on a floor uh, made up of 16 tiles, each of which are triangular. So see here, the tiles are triangular. How is this design made? How is this design made? So they are triangular tiles. See here. This is one triangular tile and this is the other triangular tile. They are put together. They are put together. They join like this to make a petal of the flower. These are the petals. These are the petals. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How are the petals made? By joining two triangular tiles. The petals are made. The petals. There are eight petals. How are the petals made? They are made by joining two triangular tiles. Two triangular tiles. This is one tile. This is one tile. Similar to this, another tile like this. So the area of one petal is the area of the two triangles. Okay. So 
This is the floral design. It's made up of 16 tiles. Let's number the tiles here. One, two. Triangular tiles, no? The tiles, see, the tiles are triangular. It's given that the tiles are triangular. So let's count. Uh, let's count our 16 uh, tiles. So it will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16. So there are 16 tiles. The tiles are triangular, children. The tiles are triangular. The tiles are triangular. So one tile is placed like this. The other tile is placed like this. So that forms a petal. Two tiles put together, it forms a petal. Now you need to find the cost of polishing the tiles at the rate of rupees 50 per, per centimeter squared. So find the area of one tile, then multiply by 16 to find the area of all the 16 tiles, and then multiply it by the rate 50 paise to find the cost. So first we find area of one tile. First we find area of one tile. Uh, these are the sides given here. See here it's marked. It's marked here. The row, you know, the size of the triangular tile. 20 can't read it. 28 centimeters and 9 centi 28 centimeters, 9 centimeters, 35 centimeters. See here, this is the triangle. 28, 9, and 35. 28, 9, and 35 are the sides of the triangle. So you need to find the area of one tile. That's one triangular tile. One triangular tile it is. So you get uh, something like this and multiply that by 16 to find the area of the design or all the 16 tiles. To find the area of the design or all the 16 tiles, should just multiply uh, this answer by 16. Now coming to the cost. This is the total area of the design. Coming to the cost, it's given 50 paise per centimeter square. So convert that to rupees, 50 by 100. When you divide by 100, it's converted to rupees. So whatever is the area here, 16 into 18.82 into 50 by 100. Why 50 by 100? Because it's in paise. If it was in rupees, you can multiply straight away. Paise. So it'll be 50 by 100. And then, you know, you can simplify and bring it to 705.6. Take a picture, children. Just a minute, children.
children just a minute just a minute children i'll just get back Yes, children, thank you. Yeah, so I was telling you that. Um, yeah, so each of these petals, you can see that this uh, design has how many petals? Eight petals. One petals, I'm saying petals, I'm not saying triangles. Eight petals, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight petals. Each petal has two, I'm saying petals. Now this, this design, this design has eight petals. Each petal, each petal is made of two triangles. Each petal is made of two triangles. Okay, so totally there are 16 triangles in this design. So we need to find the area of one triangle, multiply by 16 to find the area of 16 triangles. Now this design has to be polished. What is the rate of polishing? 50 paise for one centimeter square. One centimeter square, 50 paise. What is the area of the 16 tiles? This one. This is the area of all the 16 tiles. Oh, sorry. This is the area of all the 16 tiles. Or the area of the design. So, 1 centimeter square, 50 paise. So, for this area, it will be into whatever is the uh, total area. This one into 50 paise. 50 paise, convert that to rupees. So, 50 by 100. Convert that to rupees. So, 50 by 100. You can even multiply. See. Uh, now, I should answer this question. Why have you not found the product? Your question may be, why did you not multiply 16 to 88.2? Why you didn't multiply? You can multiply. This is not the final answer, so I didn't multiply. This one is not a final answer, right? So I did not multiply. Okay, so if you want, you can find the product here. This is not the final answer, so I didn't want to multiply. 
So area into rate. Area is this one. Into rate is 50 pi. Say. So 50 by 100. So 51s are 52s are 1 by 2. Then 21s are 28s are 705.6 rupees. And children, I've always told you the value of root 6 should be given. If it is given, then you can do these steps. So the value of root 6, the value of root 6, <clears throat> it'll be given to you like 2.449. Or if it is given 2.45, whatever, then find the product. Find the product 88.2. Supposing you say, what if the value of root 6 is not given? If it is not given, if the value of root 6 is not given, then it will be 36 root 6. <clears throat> 36 root 6 is the uh, area of one triangle. So for 16 triangles into 16, into 50 by 100. 1s are 2s are 2s are 2 8s are. So now 8 6 are 48 8 4 carried over. 8 3s are 24 28. 288 root 6 rupees. You should leave it like this. If the value of root 6 is not given, you should leave it like this. Rupees 288 root 6. Understood? If the value of root 6 is given, then you apply it. Find the product, you get 88.2. That is for one triangle. So for 16 triangles. So this is the total area of the design. Into the rate 50 by 100 will give you the total cost. Take a picture, children. Taking children? Yes, no. Okay. An umbrella is made by stitching 10 triangular pieces of cloth. See, here you can see only five. So on the other side, there is five more. Here you can see one, two, three, four, five. But the question says 10. So it's it's on the other side. It is a flat. It's a plain figure, no? So you, you're not able to see all the 10. You're not able to see all the 10. An umbrella is made by stitching 10 triangular piece of cloth. Five you can see here. Like this five is there behind. Uh, of two different colors. Each piece measuring. So maybe this is uh, green. This is red. This is green, this is red, this is green. So they've used five, five triangular uh, pieces of green color and five triangular pieces of red color. But all the triangles have the same sides, 20, 50 and 50. All the triangles have the same sides, 20, 50 and 50. The umbrella is made up of 10 triangles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On the other side, five, so 10 triangular pieces of cloth. Two different colors are used. So maybe this is green, this is red, this is green, this is red, this is green. So that means five green and five red pieces of cloth. But all these, these are all triangular. These pieces of cloth are triangular. And every triangle has the same uh, sides, 20, 50 and 50. The question is, how much cloth of each color is required for the umbrella? So clearly, you just have to find the area of one triangle. Find the area of one triangle using Heron's formula. It's 50, 50 and 20. Using Heron's formula, find the area of this triangle. Multiply by 5, not by 10. If you multiply by 10, you will get the total area of the cloth in the umbrella. 
if you multiply by 10, you will get the total area of the cloth used in the umbrella. But they are asking you how much cloth of each color. So into 5, multiply by 5, you will get the, uh, you know, the amount of cloth used for each color. I think uh, I didn't multiply by five, is it? Let me just check. Um, how much of cloth of each color is required for the umbrella? Yeah, I've not multiplied by five here, sorry. 200 root six. Area of cloth uh, for each color is equal to 200 root 6 into 5. That is 1000 root 6 centimeters square. This is the answer. Because area of one triangular piece is 200 root 6. The area of one triangular piece is 200 root 6. So like that 5 makes one color. So 200 root 6 into 5. 1000 root 6 centimeter square. You should leave the answer like this. If value of root 6 is not given, you should just leave the answer like this. Children, uh, am I clear, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. We have found the area of only one triangular piece. But of one color, how many triangles are there? Five triangles are there. So it should multiply by five. And that is the area of cloth needed for each color. And if the value of root six is not given, you should leave the answer like this. Thousand root six centimeters square. That's all. <clears throat> So you need 1000 root 6 of green color and 1000 root 6 of uh, a red color. Just for in our example. All right, children. Just a second, children. No, I don't. I'm done. Okay, next one. Oh, yeah, take a picture, children. Done? Done, Mom. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, look at this. Class, use the emoji, raise your hand. Swati, Bhavishya, Abhishek, Prenu, Lakshan, Laksha, Anugraha, Aniruddhan, Kamalika, Niveda, Sahana, Mritsa, Aragamai, Srivatsan. Krishna Priyan. Oh, the twin girls are missing. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Oh, Sadhana. Sadhana and Sabarna, you were not there, no? You just joined? Yes, ma'am. Why? What happened? Ma'am, I was in the other class. Other class, huh? What is it? Oh. Okay, fine. All right, yeah. 
Yes, sir. Okay, so this is the next question. A kite is in the shape. A kite is in the shape of a square. Did I see Srivatsan? Are you there, Srivatsan? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> a kite is in the shape of a square. Where is the square? This is the square. Okay. This is the square. A kite is in the shape of a square. This is the square. Is in the shape of a square with diagonal 32 centimeters. With diagonal 32 centimeters. And we know that in a square, both the diagonals are equal. In a rhombus, the diagonals are unequal. In a rhombus, the diagonals are unequal. In a square, the diagonals are equal. So diagonals are 32 centimeters and an isosceles triangle. See here, this is the isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangle of base eight is uh, sorry of base eight centimeters and six centimeter sides. Six centimeter. Now. Uh, this is to be made of three different shades as shown in the figure. In this figure, I can't, uh, you know, it, it looks dark. So maybe this one, this one, one color, this another color, and this one another color. How much paper of each shade has been used in it? How much paper of each shade has been used in it? So let's understand the question. The whole thing is a kite. The whole thing is a kite. The top part of the kite is a square. This one is a square. In a square, the diagonals are equal. So 32 centimeters, 32 centimeters, diagonals. Now, the, the bottom you see a triangle. This one is an isosceles triangle. Six centimeters, six centimeters. And the base is eight centimeters. For the square, we only know the diagonals, 32, 32. We don't know anything else for the square. What do you know for the square? We only know the diagonals, 32 centimeters, 32 centimeters. We only know the diagonals for the square. And for the triangle, we have everything. We can use the, we can use Heron's formula and find the area of this triangle. Now, uh, three different shades have been used to make the kite. Maybe one color here, one color here, and one color here. So you must find the area of triangle ABC, ADC, and DEF separately because different colors. <clears throat> you must find the area of triangle ABC, ADC, and DEF separately. How much? Because the, what is the, because what is the question? How much paper of each shade has been used to make it? Each shade separately, you should find. Okay. Now, uh, these are the properties of a square. Okay, the properties of a square. Okay, diagonals are equal and bisect each other. And they bisect each other at right angles. They bisect each other at right angles. The diagonals of a square are equal. And they bisect each other. That means they cut each other, one another equally. They bisect each other at right angles. So this property from this property of the square, what we understand is that AO is 16. OC is 16. BO is 16. OD 16. And here it is 90 degrees. Because they bisect at right angles. They bisect meaning 16, 16, 16, 16. Bisect. Right angles. So this is 90 degrees. We are given that this whole thing is 32. O will be the midpoint of AC. So 16, 16. 
we are also given that this whole thing is 32. O is the midpoint. So B O is 16, O D is 16. And also this is 90 degrees. If you want to make a note of this, uh, you can take a, okay, one minute, one minute, one minute. Just a minute. Yeah, take a screenshot like this, children. Take a picture like this. Done? Done. Yeah, now take a picture like this also. So now this one, this is 16. This is 16. This is 16. This is 16. 16 and 90 degrees. Take a picture again. Now, for the first part, okay, area of triangle ABC, area of triangle ABC is equal to half into base AC into altitude BO. We know area of triangle, triangle, how do you find the area of a triangle? Half base into height, half base into height. So half into base AC into the uh, height BO. So half into uh, 32, AC is 32, into height 16. This will be the area of triangle ABC. Area of triangle ADC, ADC will be half into base AC into height OD or DO. So half into 32 into 16. Now, for the triangle, you should find the area using Heron's formula. So, this is how you find the area of the three different parts. Because these three parts are made of different color, no? So, this is how you find the area of the three parts separately. If they ask you to find the area of the kite, add all the three, that will be the area of the kite. That's what you see here, children. You can see here region 1, region 1, region 2, and region 3. Take a picture, children. Done, children? Done, mom. Okay. A field is in the shape of a trapezium whose parallel sides are 25 meters and 10 meters. OK, so these are the parallel sides of the trapezium. 25 meters and 10 meters. Obviously, you know, this is small. This is longer, so this has to be 25. This has to be 25 by our figure. In our figure, this is 25, this is 10. The non parallel sides are 14 meters and 13 meters. 13 meters, 14 meters. You can mark anywhere. You can put 13 here and 14 here also. You will get the same answer. Sorry. Yeah. Find the area of the field. The question is to find the area of the field. <clears throat> so 
So we know all the sides of the trapezium. We know the parallel sides are 10 meters and 25 meters. And the non-parallel side, these two, these sides are not parallel. These two sides are not parallel. And they are 14 meters and 13 meters. You need to find the area of the field. So for this, the construction will be, now if you call this trapezium ABCD, ABCD, through this point B, draw something like BE parallel to AD. That's a construction. Through B, draw BE parallel to AD. Construction through B, draw BE parallel to AD. Now, look at the quadrilateral formed ABED. Look at the quadrilateral formed. Both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. This is parallel to this. And now by construction, this is parallel to this. Therefore, this one is a parallelogram. This one is a parallelogram. Because both the, both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. See, this is already parallel to this. Now by construction, this is parallel to this. Therefore, ABED is a parallelogram because both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. That is step one. Step two, apply the properties of a parallelogram. In a parallelogram, opposite sides are equal. Opposite sides are equal. So this one will be 10 meters. So the remaining part, this one will be 25 minus 10, which is 15. Because this full thing is 25. This full thing is 25. But opposite sides are equal. 10, 10. So the remaining part will be 25 minus 10, which is 15 meters. 15 meters. This is step two. Step one is to uh, use a suitable construction to divide the figure into a parallelogram and a triangle. See, by the construction, we have divided the figure into a uh, divided the trapezium into a parallelogram and a triangle. Using a constru suitable construction, we have divided the trapezium into one parallelogram and one triangle. So the construction, I'm coming again. Construction, draw BE parallel to AD. Parallel to AD. So ABED is a parallelogram. Because both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Then use the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal. So AB is 10, so DE is also 10. Then what is the remaining part? 25 minus 10. Because the full thing is 25. It's given minus 10. This will be 15. This is step two. Step three is to find the area of the triangle BEC. Find the area of the triangle BEC using Heron's formula. OK, opposite sides are equal. Now I missed one more. 10, 10. This is 13. This also will be 13. This opposite sides are equal. So this is 13. This also 13. Opposite sides are equal. Now the next step is to find the area of this triangle using Heron's formula. Now say you found it. Next is to draw an altitude. Say yeah, BF. Draw an altitude BF on EC. Now supposing the area of this triangle, for example, it is uh, say um, some <clears throat> 75 uh, meters square. Supposing. Area of the triangle is 75 meters square. So that means half into base EC into the height BF is equal to 75. We would have found the area using Heron's formula. But the same area you should get when you use half base into height also. So half into base EC into altitude BF is equal to 75. So half into EC is 15. 
into BF is equal to 75. So when you work this, you will find BF. You will find the altitude, the length of the altitude BF. Now we are done. We are almost, uh, you know, at the end of the answer. Now you can find the area of the trapezium in two ways. In two ways you can find the area. The area of the trapezium can be found using the formula half into sum of the parallel sides into the distance between the parallel sides. That means half into sum of the parallel sides AB and AB plus uh, DC. They at the parallel sides into the distance between them is BF. BF is the distance between the parallel sides. This one. This is the distance between the parallel sides. See here, this distance here, you keep moving it, you keep moving it, see here. That's the distance between the parallel. This is the distance between the parallel sides. Just keep moving this. This one, you keep moving it like this. Keep moving it, see here. This is the distance between the parallel sides. So you can substitute the values in this and find the area of the trapezium. Or you can find the area of the trapezium by finding the area of the parallelogram and the triangle and adding both. Area of the trapezium is area of the parallelogram plus the area of the triangle. Area of the, area of the trapezium is area of the parallelogram plus the area of the triangle. So how do you find the area of the parallelogram then? Base into height. Formula is base into height. Area of a parallelogram can be found using the formula base into height. So base is this one. This is the base of the par parallelogram is only till here. Only this is the parallelogram. So base is 10. Into height. Base into height. This is the height. BF is the height. BF is the height of the parallelogram. It's the height of the trapezium. It's the height of the triangle because it's the distance between the parallel sides. BF is the altitude of the triangle. It's the distance between the parallel sides of the trapezium. It's the height of the parallelogram. Everything is BF. So you can find the area of the trapezium using the this method area of the parallelogram plus the area of the triangle. To find the area of the parallelogram base into height triangle you've already found using Heron's formula. So you can add. I'll repeat this. I'll just give a break for a minute. Repeat this and then show you the answer slide. OK, so trapezium, draw trapezium, trapezium, parallel sides, A, B, C, D. Parallel sides are 25, so this one is 25 meters. And this is 10 meters. Non parallel sides, 14 and 13. So this is given to you already. Now, how will you, you know, like work the answer? Step one, through B, draw BE parallel to AD. Therefore, ABED is a parallelogram. Because both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So now we have divided the trapezium into a parallelogram ABED and a triangle BEC. So we can find the area of this parallelogram triangle and add both to find the area of the trapezium. That's one method. Or you can directly use a formula to find the area of a trapezium. Half sum of the parallel sides and the distance between them. 
Okay. So step one is this construction and then showing that there's a parallelogram. Now step two, use the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal. So this also is 10 meters. So the remaining, this one will be 15 because totally it's 25. 10 gone here. So this will be 15. Also, this is 13. This will be 13. Opposite sides are equal. 13, 13. 10, 10. So applying the properties of a parallelogram is step two. Step three is in the tri triangle, construct the altitude. Construct the altitude. Now find the area of the triangle. That's one, that's one thing. Next, find the area of the triangle BEC using Heron's formula. You have found. Once you find the area of the triangle using Heron's formula, find BF. Using the formula half base into height, find BF. That's all. Once you find B, BF is what we want. Once you find BF, you can answer this question. We want to find BF. Yes, children, I wanted to go through this answer because the others were uh, simple. This one, I wanted to go through the answer. And if you have any doubts, I want you to get them clarified. I'll just come back in five minutes. Go through the answer. I'll come back in five minutes.
Yes, children, did you have sufficient time to go through? I'm back, children. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so here is the construction. Here is like how you prove it's a parallelogram. Both the pairs of opposite sides are parallel, so it's a parallelogram. By construction, this is con construction. Then we use the properties of a parallelogram. Opposite sides are equal. Then we find this one. This one we find 15. And then area of this triangle. Next is to find the area of this triangle. So you can see semi perimeter and all that stuff. Area of the triangle is 84 meters square. But how else can you find the area of the triangle? Using the formula half base into height. Half into base EB into the height CL is equal to 84. Now this base is 15. So when you substitute 15, you, will you can find CL, the altitude CL. You can find the altitude CL. Now, see, I told you no two ways. So area of the trapezium can be found using the formula like this. Half sum of the parallel sides into distance between them. Half into sum of the parallel sides into distance between them. Directly you will get the area of the uh, trapezium. Or you can find the area of the parallelogram using the formula base into height. Base into height. Base of the parallelogram, not base of the trapezium. See here. AE base and you know figure base and figure AE is the base of the parallelogram EB is the base of the triangle AB is the base of the trapezium I'll write it again base and the figure base AE is of the parallelogram. Base EB is of the triangle. Base AB is of the trapezium. So area of the parallelogram is base and height. Base of the trapezium into height. Base of the trapezium is, sorry, base of the parallelogram into height of the parallelogram. Base of the parallelogram is AE. AE, this is the base of the parallelogram. Into the height. This is for this is the height for all the figures here. So like this, you find the area of the uh, parallelogram. Area of the triangle we already have here. Area of the triangle we already have here. Area of the parallelogram we found. So add both to find the area of the trapezium. Understood, children? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. So this is a similar question. Read the question for yourself. So the only difference here is uh, one minute, 15, 15, yeah. So the uh, the difference is that uh, the earlier, this, this trapezium, this is just a trapezium. This is a trapezium, but this one is an isosceles trapezium. It's an isosceles trapezium because the non-parallel sides are equal. See, a parallel sides are 25 and 13. Parallel sides are 25 and 13. The non-parallel sides, both are 15. That means it's an isosceles trapezium. Isosceles trapezium. So make a note of this. Or you can take a screenshot. I'll write it and then you take the screenshot. A trapezium in which the non-parallel sides, the non 
parallel sides are equal is called somebody's mic is enabled disable your mic prenu disable your mic prenu prenu put your mic on mute prenu so a trapezium in which the non parallel sides are equal is called an isosceles trapezium is called an isosceles trapezium yeah now take a picture So the procedure is the same the procedure is the same children but here you get the area of the uh, triangle as 18 root 21 18 root 21 you get and then half base and height you get the altitude as 3 root 21 3 root 21 that's all that's only difference here you get a whole number your area is 84 and the height is uh, 11.2 but here you have a irrational number here the area is this one the height is this working the procedure is similar children okay yeah take a picture now next class i'll check all your notebooks all your notebooks all of you should have completed these uh, answers question and answer do not blindly copy all of you must have completed working all these sums in your tuition class work notebook by the next class on friday no excuses i'll keep it like 20 minutes for that i'll go around the class i'll check every one's book yeah take a picture children done yes ma'am okay so this also children this similar yeah please practice take a picture similar a situation then mom very good yeah i'll teach you these two and uh, we'll wind up the session for today these two and we'll wind up the session for today yeah
Okay. Uh, so look, look at this uh, figure uh, or look at this triangle ABC. Now if I mark D as the midpoint, as the midpoint of BC, supposing I mark D as the midpoint of BC, AD, AD is the median, AD is the median on BC. AD will be the median on BC. Because it's a line segment from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. If a line segment from the vertex of a triangle meets the opposite side at the midpoint, then that line segment is called the median of the triangle. Now, similarly, now BE. If E is the midpoint of AC, supposing E is the midpoint of AC. E is the midpoint of AC, then B is the median. B E is the median on AC because E is the midpoint of AC. Similarly, C F, if F is the midpoint, if this is the midpoint of A B, then C F is the median. C F is the median on A B. Why is C F the median? Because it's it's a line segment from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. Do we understand this, children? Yes, ma'am. OK, so median is a line segment drawn from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. It need not be perpendicular to the opposite side. Perpendicular is altitude. It need not be it need not make 90 degrees. It has it will meet the opposite side at the midpoint. That's all. That's the property. It need not make a right angle with the opposite side. Now you can see that the medians are concurrent. They go through the same point. You can see that the medians they are concurrent. OK, the medians, the three medians. The three medians. Of the triangle. Pass through the same point, pass through the same point. This point of concurrency. This point of concurrency. Is called. The median. Oh, sorry, yeah. the centroid. The centroid of the triangle. The centroid of the triangle. And it's normally represented by the letter G. Concurrency is when two lines meet, we say point of intersection. When two lines meet, we say point of intersection. If more than two lines meet, it's called the point of concurrency. That's all. Point of concurrency is like point of intersection only. Point of intersection is only when two lines meet at a point. We say point of intersection. If more than two lines. When more than two lines pass through the same point, it's called the point of concurrency. In any triangle, the three medians, they are concurrent. That means they'll pass through the same point. And that point of concurrency is called the centroid of the triangle. Yeah, take a screenshot, children. Take a picture. Uh, when you take a picture, children, it comes with the annotation, right? When you yes, capture a screenshot, yeah, when you capture a screenshot, make sure you're getting what I write also. Medium is a line segment. What I have written, that also should be in the screenshot. OK, so this is about. See if I don't know uh, if. Uh, screenshot should 
capture everything on the screen, but I don't know if the annotation is not coming, then it's a waste. I want you to capture a screenshot with the annotation. If it's not, if you're not getting it like that, take a photo with your phone. Okay, so this is about a, this is about a triangle and its medians. Now, an important property of the median. Okay, so median, median divides a triangle into two triangles equal in area, equal in area. That means in triangle ABC, AD is a median, is a median. Therefore, area of triangle ABD is equal to area of triangle ACD. AD is the median. So it divides a triangle into two triangles equal in area. That means in triangle ABC, AD is the median. So triangle area of triangle ABD is equal to the area of triangle ACD. Sorry. Is this property understood? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, uh, for the sake of this, uh, this property, take a screenshot again, children. Done, mom. Yeah. So now coming to the question. So since this question has, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, in this question, we need to use the property of a median. So we had to understand, we had to have the prerequisite knowledge about median and the property of a median. That's why we discussed uh, that. Okay. Now in this question, Kamala has a triangular uh, field, okay, with sides 240 meters. Where is it? 240? Yeah, 240 meters is here. 240 meters. 200 meters and 360 meters. Okay, so she has this triangular uh, field where she grew wheat. So here she grows wheat. Okay, in another triangular field with sides 240 meters, oh, the same thing 240 meters, 320 meters, and 400 meters. Adjacent to the previous field. Adjacent meaning just next to. Meaning, see, this, this side is common to both the fields. 240 is common to both the fields. So she has a field like this. She has a field like this. Okay, so she has a field like this and just next to this. So she has another field like this. Just next to it, she has another field like this. So the sides of this field are 240. The first field are 240, 200 and uh, 360. The second field 240, 320 and 400. 320 and 400. So she has fields like this. So here she grows wheat. Here she grows wheat. 
OK, she divided the field. OK, sorry, adjusting to the previous field. She wanted to. She wanted to grow potatoes and onions. So she divided the field into two parts by joining the midpoint of the longest side to the opposite side, vertex. So this is the longest side. In the second triangle, this is the longest side because 240, 320, 400. 400 is the longest side. So she marks the midpoint of 400, 200. She marks off the midpoint of 400, which is 200, and she joins that to the opposite vertex. That means she's constructed the median. That means she has constructed the median. In the second field, what she does is she marks the midpoint of 400, 200 here, and she joins that to the vertex. So that means she's constructed the median CE. So now what will the median do? It will divide the triangle ACD. It will divide the triangle ACD into two triangles equal in area. So the area of this triangle is equal to the area of this triangle. So now the question is how much area has been used for wheat, potatoes and onions? So for potato for wheat, it's very simple. Uh, area of field used to grow wheat is the area of this triangle with sides 240, 360 and 200. That'll be the area. Find the area using Heron's formula. That is the area on which she grows wheat. Then coming to potatoes and onions. Uh, look at the side here, 240. This one we don't know. This one is 200. This side we don't know. Similarly for the other triangle, this one we don't know. This one is 320 and this is 200. So which means you cannot find the area of this triangle. This triangle separately you cannot find. You cannot find the area of these two triangles separately because you don't know the length of the side. You don't know the length of the side. So you cannot find the areas of these two triangles separately. That's why we use the property of the median. What is the property of the median? It divides the triangle into two triangles equal in area. So which means you can find the area of the whole triangle ACD. Find the area of the whole triangle ACD. You know this is 240, this is 320, this is 400. So find the area of the whole triangle using Heron's formula and divide the answer by two. Divide the answer by two. So that will be for potatoes and onions. Now here we use the property of the median. Tamla herself, what she does is she marks the midpoint of the longest side. So yeah, this is the longest side. She takes the midpoint and she joins that to the opposite vertex. So she constructs the median herself, but she does. See, she does it in. She does not know it's a median, but she knows by doing that she can divide the field into two portions equal in area. She knows that. So as we understood, we cannot find the areas of this triangle, this triangle separately because we don't know the length of this side. So we need to find the area of the whole triangle using Heron's formula and divide by two. Why divide by two? Because we know that this is the median. This is the median. So it divides the triangle into two triangles equal in area. So what is CE, children? In this triangle, what is CE? It is the median of the triangle ACD. Very good. It's a median of the triangle ACD. And E is the midpoint of AD, correct? Yes, ma'am. And what is the property of the median? It divides the triangle into, it divides which triangle? It divides which triangle? The median. How much divide angle ACD? ACD. ACD into two triangles equal in area. OK. And also you need to know that one hectare is 
an area of one hectare is equal to 10,000 meters squared. An area of 10,000, uh, sorry, one hectare. If you say that you own one hectare of land, if you say you own one hectare of land, that means you have 10,000 meters squared. 10,000 meters square of land. 10,000 meters square of land. One hectare is equal to 10,000 meters square. Hectare is not a unit of length. It's a unit of area. One hectare is not length. It's the unit of area. 10,000 meters square is equal to one hectare. Yeah, take a picture, children. H is a short for a hectare. Like for kilometer, you write km. For decameter, you write this. For decimeter, you write this. For hectares, it is HA. HA is the don't think the spelling mistake. Hectare, short form HA. Like kilometer km. Hectare is HA. So you work out this. We will we'll again discuss this because uh, the steps and all that I need to make sure if you understood. You work this. It's easy to, you know, like see and work this because there's no new concept here. It's again finding the area of the triangle using Heron's formula. So it's not difficult. You can uh, help yourself. We'll discuss this answer in the next class. I'll just may I'll just ask you if you understood the steps or if you have any doubt anywhere, I'll clarify in the next class. Picture children, take a screenshot. Done, mom. Okay. Yeah, this one is you need to find the area of the model. You need to find the area of the model. So this one is very easy because this one is a triangle. You should find the area of this triangle. This one is a triangle. This one is a triangle. This one is a rectangle. And this one is a trapezium. The trapezium. Yeah, take a picture, children. So the 31st and the 32nd one, we'll discuss the steps also in the next class, but you should complete it in your notebook. You try to understand as much as possible while working. You may understand it completely by yourself or you may have doubts. Both are fine. Both are normal. If you are able to understand by yourself completely, fine. But if you have some doubts, also it's fine. We'll discuss in the next class. Take a picture of this one also, children. This one, I'm not explaining anything now. because It's, it's all very common figures like triangle and rectangle of which you know, like the area of which you can find very easily. It's just that there are some irrational values involved, so it might look difficult. Like the idea to find the area of this uh, figure, you know, is very easy. Take a picture. Done, ma'am. All of you? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Uh, thank you so much, children. You may leave the call. Good night. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you,